Let's see the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. What's the best way to bring up a child, not in a traditional African society? Cover up punishment was and is still a very acceptable pattern of correcting children. Now, in spite of strong legislative framework, cover up punishment remains widespread practice in Nigeria in schools, homes, and even in religious organization. Unlike the Western world where parents would spank their children um, hidden from public view, Nigerian parents do so at the slightest provocation. So that's, a, that's an ongoing debate and conversation on the best practice of um, parenting skills for children. Who does it better, baby boomers or the silent generation? We do have a child psychologist, Dr. Selin Joko, joining this uh, conversation this morning. All right, uh, we'll try and reconnect uh, with Dr. Selen and Joko. Uh, we're having some um, little hitch there. So, mercy, you know, back in the day. You're smart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not trying to be naughty right now. Back in the day, if you did something wrong and um, your mother was to correct you, there are two ways she could do that. She'll give me this look. Stain or look. <laughs> in Igbo, we say, Doya Akananti. As in, <laughs> draw. draw. <laughs> Drop so you're saying you were never spanked? I was just saying how it was done back in the day. You know, so basically, they did not really spare the rod. You know, yes, mom, see, well, that's what I call my mom, I did that to us, you know, because sometimes we just needed our brains to be reset. <laughs> you know, so, you know, although dad never really liked that. He was more of the calm, calm vibe. We were more scared of our mom than our dad. But lately, there's this ongoing conversation, like you rightly uh, just uh, introduced, about uh, how to correct the child. Most schools, most, uh, you know, People will not agree that um, the child should be flogged or caned or you know spanked in any way because they feel it is not the right way to correct you know the child as opposed to what we had back in the day. So well, um, the truth is, I mean, for a lot of us, including myself, we have been spanked by our parents. I mean, for me, uh, the highest. Were you spanked? Yes, my grandmother was the highest Are you stubborn? on the list. I don't know if I was stubborn, <laughs> <laughs> but I really, I think I really got it very hard from my grandmother. Oh, wow. And um, so, but, but you know that there are a lot of culture and practice and belief system that we hold as a people. I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong, you know, so this is me not particularly taking the side, but I'm thinking that we have to, you know, get to a point where we have a balance. Now, there are a lot of professionals that have come up to say, over time, there's been studies revealing that if you constantly go hard and hitting the child, it doesn't really get results. Now, you also find out that there are a lot of children whose parents have decided to toe that line of, uh, we have to spank you at the slightest provocation. Uh, provocation. They haven't really, I mean, that has not really yielded any result. And some people would say, according to this research, that these children have become more hard. And it feels like the more you hit them, they get too used to it and they feel like, oh, what's going to be the next it's thing? Just, Let's uh, hit them. Recently, fine. I stumbled on an article that talked about the fact that maybe we need to begin to uh, move away. These uh, are proven studies and research and pattern of behavior that's been observed by these experts. And they're saying maybe people need to begin to take another approach of rather than spank the child, why don't you withdraw what the child loves the most? So there are different ways mm -hmm. of spanking. I mean, putting out the punishment. Nobody's saying the most important thing is should children be punished when um, they, they go astray wrong. or they, go, um, they do something wrong? How do you correct them mm -hmm. when they have done something wrong? How do you pass a message? Spanking has always been you know, our number one on the list in Africa. And you know the African moms never miss it. They get you whenever they want to get you. Right. But on the other hand also, how far have that yielded any result for us? How effective has that really been? Has it made the children become better? Did they learn the lessons? Did they get the message? Mm -hmm. So people now, you have a lot of these psychologists who are now saying, why don't we um, look at this, look at this pattern, if it's not yielded any result? Then let's also consider other methods. Like... Um, the article that I stum or stumbled on and I read, it talked about um, people withdrawing things that these children really love. For instance, they probably would have a favorite meal. They could probably have some allowances. I mean, for me, there's always something they used to call pocket money, and so uh, maybe you <laughs> don't have to get it. People are saying this might just be another way of meting punishment without having to be very physical mm -hmm. uh, all the time. 
And in other, you know, um, situation or circumstances, we probably would think that dialogue, because dialogue, if you look at it, communication has always been key. Communication would always be key for any relationship, whether it is, you know, family, a mother and daughter, a child, you know, father and son, whatever it is, that family relationship, a work relationship, you know, man and woman relationship, communication. And so I'm thinking that we're evolving. We should not say that we can't punish children if they do anything wrong, but we also need to begin to think about the pattern and the approach as a yield that result and then maybe we get to a point where we you know you know, uh, you know best i was practice. actually taking notes uh you know, <laughs> Why are you, taking notes? <laughs> you know you're actually parenting me live on air like okay <laughs> messi's coaching 101 and no, no, you actually raised several valid points which i agree with let me start with um, the dialogue that you have mentioned or communication. You know, most parents, they don't even know how to talk to their children. They don't even have time to talk to their children. They don't even spend time with their children. So there's th this connection, this connect, this one on one conversation. They don't usually even have the time to do that. So, you know, most times, they leave the correction and everything to the nannies and everything. They don't even have time to explain to the child why they should not be doing this, you know, the repercussion of their actions, you know. Like you have said, I agree. I agree completely with you. You know, take some of the things that they actually hold there to. Uh, you talked about pocket money. Uh, maybe they were promised to go, uh, some vacation if uh, you know they pass their exams, and somehow you know they went all right, and they maybe were involved in some sort of um, fighting or other vices. You could actually withdraw the vacation, and uh, if they know that uh, they won't be getting you know that particular thing just because of their bad attitude, they would actually not want to do the same thing. The next time, you also talked about um, learning lessons. If you communicate uh, to your child, you know, you speak to them about um, the right conduct and uh, what to do and what not to do, you're actually inculcating good habits you know, on them. And then over time, there are lessons to be taught and they can also share you know, with their, uh, with their yeah. peers you know, during um, playtime or even school activities. Hmm. I think we've been told that we have uh, we? Dr. Selin Njoku. Okay, so unfortunately, we're unable to have. Her. I'm sure that we would definitely, yeah, we'll her, uh, you know, have her share her thoughts mm. as an expert that she is a child psychologist, yes, and is. then understand the dynamics. But it's a lot for us. We're evolving as a people. I don't think that there's a static. But I love Africa. I love Nigerians. I mean, <laughs> some days back, I was having a conversation with you know a friend who's not in the country, and she has to raise her children outside of Nigeria. And you know the most, imp you know the thing that really is amazing is the fact that she still holds on to those values. Mm. She she still thinks that it's still the best. The way I was raised, my kids have to be raised the same no, way. But they know so not allow you to so do but it, it is very unfortunate. No, not for her. Okay. I mean, I, I listen. Sometimes we have this um, the lengthy right conversation. Yeah, we have this lengthy conversation, mm -hmm. um, and she goes on. And sometimes I wonder if she's still in the, the United Kingdom, which is <laughs> another part of the country, because she sounds like an African and a Nigerian mom. So, but it's really, really sad to look at it back, if you look back at it and see how uh, parenting has been done over time, the issue of accountability. Yesterday we talked about it and we mentioned it in the passing. One of it, apart from the fact that, you know, corporal punishment was also there. Before the punishment, there's also the point where you are held accountable. And so you're being asked, where did you go to? Um, how did you get this? So they see you with an item, with a book, with a pencil, yes, with a pen. And, uh, your, your mother would ask you, who gave you this? Because they remember that they never gave it to you. And so you have to be accountable. Uh, where, where are you going to? Who are you hanging with? Well, we need not to forget ourselves. These are things that have made us who we are. But I'm also saying that we also need to improvise on it. Uh, I know a lot of people would say, do not spare uh, the rod mm. and spoil the child. And that's part of the scripture. You also have the scriptures, obey your parents and the Lord so, so you that may, you may live long. long. But, you know, parents also forget the parts of that scripture that says parents do not provoke your children to anger. anger and all of that. So mm. it's a two-way thing. I'm still it's taking a from Messi, you know? <laughs> It's encompassing. I think I should no, be my, coming for I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a child of an old woman. <laughs> You should be counseling <laughs> children. No, so but so I I feel like I, I do love you know the African culture. I okay. do respect it because it's a culture where it is what to respect is ours and it's very unique to us. And I think that it is more that. So I, also again, I spoke to another friend who 
Who has a family? No, it's not counseling. (laughs) No, it's not counseling. He had to share with me that, you know, his daughter came to him and started asking about, there's a boy in my school who's liking me and not liking me. And you know, the Nigerian in him woke Uh, up. When did you start liking boys? (laughs) Not like liking boys. So how, at what point do I start, you know, all of that kind of conversation. And he was really angry. The boy likes him. They need to go out, you know, to a movie, probably on a date. And we're talking about teenage kids now. Uh, So you're looking at the age of 12 and 13. Right, but you know, the natural him, because he was taught to, the way he was raised was that you will be spanked, you will be slapped at the slightest moment. <laughs> you make those kind of statements and raise it. But mm-hmm. it was a different ball game because of the law and the system that he found himself. Of course. And rather the approach that he used was more of, you know, okay, it's Olive fine. Used the love so he, he, he decided to have, engage in a conversation, made the child comfortable, so they are able to talk about all of this. But I'm sure that if he were to be in Nigeria... They'll never open up uh, The Nigerian in him was still very family, active yeah. and wanted to you know, react and behave in some other way. But I'm sure that we'll have this conversation some other time where we have an expert share thoughts. So, but Justin, well, in all of this, what do you think? Well, if, you have, if you have children or if you have a child now, paraventure, what pattern would you go? Spank? Because uh, no, me, I will still spank. <laughs> I, I don't think I could actually spank a child. I, I don't I think I could actually bring... Uh, I don't have the heart to do that. And uh, mm. I would actually uh, sit uh, the child down. I would, uh, you know, communicate uh, with the child in love. Because uh, if you always spank at each provocation, the child will be very scared of you. And uh, uh, when there are issues of concern uh, for the child, uh, you will not be the first person the child would want to run to to talk about this little thing. But if you, uh, if they see you as your friend, uh, no matter what they said, they would always want to talk to you about anything. They will know that their dad would always understand them or their mom would always understand them. So why would I want to hide it? Uh, let me talk to mom. Mom, she would know the better way to go about this thing. So I don't believe in spanking in as much as, uh, you know, I was spanked. My, my earlobes, you know, were drawn <laughs> and I saw stars. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't I, do that to I, my children. I, so, so, but it, it is, uh, I feel like we're, we're evolving. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the times are. are really changing. And then we're getting to that point where some people are thinking that, you know, don't spank a child. But even if you don't, you're not going to spank them and you think that that's not the best way to raise them. The other ways. And there should also be other ways of letting them know what is right and, um, you know, consequences for their action. They might not necessarily be very violent. But you also, we can also take out the fact that some people have been very violent mm. in the course of all of this. I've seen parents who have decided to use machetes Ooh. really wrong. Guardians who Mm-mm-mm. have gone That's very abuse. extreme. You have people who um, heat iron. You have the iron and then they use it, they use it on these children. You have all sorts also of things. Molestation. Please. This doesn't solve the problem. No, it doesn't. And besides, we, we have the Child Rights Act, you know, so you have no right to abuse or, you know, beat or molest your children all uh, because you just want to correct them or show them the right way. There are better approaches, you know, to achieving good results. Well, that's the size of our conversation, and uh, it's been an amazing time. Two hours of great talk right here. We will definitely return tomorrow with more exciting issues to talk about. Uh, if you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel as at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Many thanks for watching. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Justin Akadin. We'll see you again uh, on the show tomorrow, 7 a.m. It was a pleasure, you know, presenting with a counselor. <laughs> Mercy. Bye for now. <laughs>